Hello again, Ant Keepers, and welcome back to this week's episode of My Antics. I've been getting a million questions talking about why colonies are not eating, drinking, actively moving around and foraging, and why it seems like there's so many workers dying without new workers replacing the numbers. There's a many, many different reasons why this could be happening, but there's the top three that we're going to talk about today. We're going to explain exactly what you should be looking for and exactly what happens if your colony does get into this negative funk. We're also going to be discussing hibernation and talking about exactly what happens when you do and don't hibernate your ant colonies. Lastly, we're going to be talking about why food options should be a variety instead of one thing every single week and how this is healthy for your colony to make sure they establish a good growth rate for the future. Let's get into it. For me and many, many others, ant keeping is something that we can come home to and relax in a positive joy knowing that our colonies are doing wonderful and it really does make our night. But sometimes the opposite effect occurs, and our colonies go in a negative spiral downwards, from workers dying, to the colony being sick, and even the extreme of parasitic mites taking over and trying to kill the ants, little by little. So what exactly are the components of a failing colony? Well, there are many different subjects that we could talk about, but the three that I want to talk about tonight are obviously the environment, major stress, and nutrients. An ant colony's environment, simply put, is the nest and the outworld attachments that you have for them to roam in. This is their entire world, and everything that they come in contact with will either be a benefit or a negative factor. You see, there are elements to this that you have to understand for a successful colony, and one is that everything is as clean as possible. Ants are neat freaks, and they don't like to be around death or decay. If we take a look at the outworld, you can see that we have clean sand with a little bit of leftover honey, which I will be cleaning up later on. There is nothing negative in this outworld that any food that we put in, we take out soon after. If we move into their nest, we'll notice that they are in the middle of the vortex nest. They themselves have put the death and decay as far away as possible until they get around to moving it into the outworld, for me to remove of course. A big occurring factor that I have noticed from a lot of different colonies not well is the water supply that they have to drink from. Water supplies are what make them able to continue moving throughout the day. In fact, an ant's body is almost like an engine that runs on water along with carbohydrates. If that water was to get funky from bacteria or mold, it could make the colony unwell, so it's definitely something to keep an eye on at all times. If you start to notice that your water is changing color if you're using a test tube, or the cotton itself starts to get funky, or even if you're using an auto water dish if the water starts to look stagnant, I would replace it, or even if it doesn't, replace it every two to three weeks just to be sure. Another big thing that ant keepers overlook is tap water. Chlorine does not mix with ants very well. In fact, it can make your ants very sick. So if you can, please try to keep a bottle of water around to make sure that there's no chlorine in the water. Real quick, I want to show you this dark rover colony that I pulled out just for the occasion. You can tell that their cotton is starting to get funky closest to where they drink from. This is the first beginning stages that the cotton and the water supply in general is going bad. And pretty soon it'll be time to move them to a new test tube to make sure that they have a clean water supply for the weeks to come. Another major issue that ant keepers may overlook is the heat and humidity of your colony's test tube or nest. If their nest or test tube was to overheat, 
ants don't have any kind of a defense against this, and they would literally dry out and die along with the brood which would shrivel up. Even tropical ants like our Campanatus fragilis here do have their limits, and if they were if they were to hit a high point of heat for a long period of time of a couple hours, the whole colony would be wiped out without a doubt, even if they had a water supply nearby. Making sure you stay in the safe bounds of their heat is very important, along with making sure the humidity of their nest or test tube is checked on constantly because this is what keeps the brood alive and it helps them to take breaks from licking the brood to keep them moist. that has to be mentioned in this video is bringing outside protein into your ant colony. This means insects like spiders, moths, different kinds of flies that you may find around your house, and other insects that come from the outside world. One, there's a possibility that those insects may have defense mechanisms like stink bugs, spiders, roaches, and there's a major chance that those insects have mites on them, which could start off small, unnoticeable for a couple of months and turn into a mite infestation unlike anything you've ever seen before. You want to make sure that you keep it to pet shop feeders or your own local colonies of feeders that you're growing in your home. I, for example, have a roach colony that I use along with bringing in crickets from a pet store along with meal and superworms. But you can go ahead and get mealworms, superworms, the easiest of the feeders to grow and have a own little colony in oatmeal. Or you can even grow crickets, but the, uh, the scenario is a little bit bigger, it takes a little bit more time and involves dirt. But the main subject matter at hand is don't ever take the chance of giving your colonies outside insects. Even if you boil them, there's a possibility that something could go wrong. Along with other major concerns, the stress of a colony goes hand in hand with any other issues of a failing colony. To bring it into perspective, our Campanatus castanus colony had a series of bad events in the last couple of months. We started losing workers, they were not eating, and the brood utterly disappeared. I couldn't figure out why, and from switching to test tube to test tube to trying different kinds of offerings, the colony seemed to be in a negative funk, as we spoke of before. Little did I know that this colony happened to be placed in a different spot than the others in my personal collection. The collection happened to be closest to the door. Little did I know this ant colony was feeling the earthquake sounds of us walking past the door and every time the door would open or shut a loud boom would occur. This was enough to seriously stress this colony out to the point of them almost stress dying completely. When I realized that there were no other options that could have been affecting them like this, I took them, put them in a box, and put them on a top shelf of a room that we never use. It was a little over two weeks later when I checked on them that the colony started to eat and run towards offerings that I gave them again, and soon afterwards a small pile of brood appeared. The moral of this is to make sure that you always keep your colony in a dark, quiet, calm location where nothing will bother them and nothing will get in the way of them succeeding as a colony. Species that are found in the colder climates of the world go through hibernation or diapause. 
This is a period of time when the world starts to get colder for them and they automatically produce an alcoholic compound called glycerol in their bodies. Glycerol helps them to stay alive even if 80% of their body is frozen throughout the winter and pop up completely active and healthy in the spring. Hibernation is important for ants because it's like taking a time machine 8 months forward. While the ants are frozen, they don't age and they don't get hungry. If you notice your colonies becoming inactive, you don't have to be worried at all. It's completely normal and once it gets warmer out towards spring, the ants will spring back to life and they will start back into their normal routine of foraging and building their numbers. Some may disagree with me on this, and it's completely understandable, but through all of my research, I found that keeping your first year colonies at room temperature instead of putting them in a cold environment is definitely beneficial for their survival. You see, though ants can survive through the winter, there are many that don't make it due to one reason or another. So keeping your colonies at a, a cooler room temperature instead of putting them in the fridge or freezer for winter is definitely what I would recommend for the first year of the colony's life. The last part is pretty simply put. Make sure that you give your colonies different offerings on a week to week basis. For example, I gave my Campanatus colony a piece of steak left over from dinner and they have been swarming, chewing, and ripping it apart ever since. This gives them the opportunity to try new things and I believe giving them different options to eat from keeps it exciting for them and never dulls down. If I could put it in simple terms, if we were to eat a hot dog every week for the rest of your life, you would be pretty miserable. So remember to switch it up from crickets, roaches, to scraps of table meat, all the way over to berries and cherries and strawberries, and so on. Your ants will thank you, and I'm sure they'll be extremely happy to try it. When it comes to realizing that your colony is not doing so well, it really is a stressful moment and you feel alone and confused and you really just have no idea what you should do next. Out of everything we talked about in this video, the one last thing I want to highly recommend to you guys is having a community of ant keepers you can talk to and explore new options that you alone may have overlooked. There are ant keepers out there that go through these issues every day, so don't feel bad about it. It's just part of ant keeping, and together with us and the community, I'm sure you can turn your colony around to be a huge success. From the environment, to the moisture and heat, down to the water supply, and hibernation, and even just switching up the meals. These are all the components to be the best pro ant keeper that you can be. And I want you girls and guys to know that I'm rooting for you all the way. You all have a wonderful night. And as we say, happy ant keeping new year of coming up 2021. 2020 is done. And... You know, other stuff. Have a good night. <laughs>